This is a revision video for Unit 4, Area of Study 1, Reviewing Performance, The Need for Change. There are six dot points in this area of study, in the study design, six things that you need to know about. And with all these concepts, you also need to be able to connect to a contemporary case study, a scenario where a business has changed in the recent past. And the first thing we looked at was the concept of business change. What is business change? and why is it important? First, you need to be able to outline that change is natural within a business. All businesses will be faced with the need to change and all businesses must make adaptions and changes. You also need to know that businesses have two options when it comes to change. They can be proactive, meaning they're the ones that initiate the change before it's mandated or required. This is the better option because these businesses will be the leaders in the industry. And by taking the lead, they can gain a competitive edge over their rivals. Being proactive also means the businesses can carefully plan for the implementation of the change. Whereas the other option to be reactive, to wait until the change is necessary before acting upon it, it can show that a business is slow to act and can put them at a disadvantage compared to their competitors. Being forced to make a reactive change can also mean they have less time to carefully plan for the changes implementation. Now there can be less risk involved in implementing a change after your arrivals to, to be reactive uh, because you can see how they changed, observe what went well and their mistakes and, and follow their lead. But nevertheless, it is overwhelmingly better to be proactive. Now Woolworths phasing out single use plastic bags, that's an example of a proactive change because they did it before they were forced to, before the law banned the plastic bags. The next thing that you need to know about is KPIs, key performance indicators. And you don't necessarily need to remember the definitions of these KPIs. It's kind of assumed you understand what they mean, but you do need to be able to analyze, analyze them, assess where the businesses need to address KPIs, and interpret why KPIs might look the way that they do, as well as proposing strategies for how businesses could improve their KPIs. So going back to the Woolworths example, you would need to be able to theorize or suggest that number of customer complaints might rise because of the change, or that it could improve net profit in the short term because it would minimize the amount of plastic bags they need to stock, and therefore it would reduce the cost of this, but it could also increase their net profit in the long term as well because customers will have a better perception of Woolworths and maybe um, they'll be more likely to shop there more often as well. The next three things we looked at are all closely linked. We looked at driving forces which initiate or support the need for change. I've categorized these into, into these three types. Stakeholders can be driving forces uh, like managers managers who want to lead the most popular business, uh, employees want to work at a place that they have pride in, uh, and, and the actions of a competitor can force businesses to adapt, so they can also be a driving force. Um, society can be a driving force, like the increase in technology, the increased need for socially responsible businesses, and the changing trends and, and views in the community. And of course, the most essential driving force being money. Businesses want to change if it's going to either reduce their costs or increase their profits. Woolworths may have been driven by social responsibility considerations, or maybe some of their competitors were going to make the change. Uh, or perhaps they wanted to increase the image of their business so that it would increase their profits. These are all the driving forces. Then re restraining forces. What are the things that will prevent a business from wanting to change? Some of, some of these are similar to driving forces, managers and employees. Um, they might like how things are currently operating and not want to change. If people are stuck in their old ways, this is what we call organizational inertia. It can stop a business from moving forward. There could be barriers in terms of cost and time. Perhaps the laws make it hard to implement the change as well. 
And that there is more than just these this list here of driving and restraining forces that you can draw upon. But you need to be able to identify them and explain how they are driving or preventing the business from making a change. These forces form part of Lewin's force field analysis theory. This is the process businesses can use to analyze a potential change. Not all driving and restraining forces are uh, as big or as important as others. So after the business has identified the driving and the restraining forces, they need to rank them in order or give them a weighting in order of their importance so they can see what the biggest forces are, either driving or restraining. Then they will try to weaken and extinguish restraining forces and, on the other hand, strengthen driving forces. You need to be able to suggest strategies for how to do this. So uh, if the customer's negative reaction at Woolies was a restraining force because they now have to pay for bags, this could be minimized or eliminated by ensuring the reusable bags had trendy designs and were long lasting. So that would be a way that they could um, minimize the restraining force. And if corporate social responsibility, CSR, if that was a leading driving force, then this could be further strengthened by ensuring that all their reusable bags were also made from recycled materials and were made locally. So let's now move on to our last topic, Porter's generic strategies. Now Porter identified that there were two approaches a business could take to gain a, an advantage or an edge over their rivals. They could offer a product or service with um, less bells and whistles, less additional extras, a simple product or service that they would not have to spend a lot of money on. By producing at a low cost, they can then offer a lower price to customers and beat the cheap alternative in the market. So that's one way. Or businesses could gain a competitive advantage over their rivals by setting themselves apart as different or unique, perhaps through having a superior quality or offering a different service or aspect than their competitors do. Uh, going back to Woolworths, they've already set themselves up as the fresh food people. That was their point of differentiation. So perhaps by phasing out single-use plastic bags, they were trying to enhance their reputation as a differentiated business, um, a big environmentally friendly supermarket. However, you could also say that uh, the phasing out of plastic bags was a cost-saving effort. If you said this, then you could also make the argument that they were trying to take a lower cost approach because um, they might then be able to reduce the prices of their supermarket items for their customers because they have reduced the costs in having to buy single-use plastic bags. Okay, so there's everything you need to know. You need to be able to apply these concepts, not just define them, but hopefully that has helped you in revising this area of study.